Welcome to this demonstration where we will show you how we have used Ansible to automate the deployment of Big AP and network services in AWS. The code in our example is freely downloadable from GitHub. We hope that you will follow the steps in this video to try things out for yourself. To automate the deployment of Big AP, we will be using Ansible, an open source configuration management and workflow tool. Our scripts will use cloud permission templates to create a VPC and associated networking resource in EC2. Subsequently, we'll launch BigAP and attach it to the network. We will use the REST interface on BigAP, iControl REST, a configuration of the virtual edition, as well as to load an IAP to create a virtual server, pool, and associated policies and profiles. Finally, we'll launch a Docker container on our application host and add this container as a pool member. Steps shown in this demo are the same steps you can repeat to run the code for yourself. The four steps involved are downloading the code from GitHub, setting up the test environment using Vagrant, running the provided Python scripts to deploy Big IP, and as a final step you can inspect the results. To run the demo yourself you will need an AWS account and you need to install Vagrant and VirtualBox. We have provided full instructions for executing these demo scripts as well as an alternative set of processes using Docker on github.com. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is download the code that we'll use in this example. Here I'm on the F5 Networks page on github.com and I'm going to use the git clone command to download the AWS deployments repository to my local desktop. The files we download should include all the necessary dependencies for running the code. Now that I've downloaded the code, I'm going to set up my test environment. This includes launching a Vagrant virtual machine, or environment, which includes all the Python libraries required for Ansible, AWS endpoints, and BigIP. The Vagrant up command will launch that virtual machine and install those dependencies. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here so we don't have to watch the machine boot. Once it does, you'll see the Python libraries that have been installed there at the end of the terminal script. We'll use the vagrant ssh command to log into the VM. And once we log in, we can see that the files that are in our local desktop are actually shared with this virtual machine. So I can run the scripts that I downloaded from GitHub inside of my virtual machine where all my dependencies have been installed. There are a few files I need to edit now that the virtual machine is running. I need to configure things such as AWS access key and secret key I use, the SSH key pair, and the credentials I want for Big IP once it's been provisioned. You can see here in the last bit of my terminal output where I've configured those files. Now that we've edited those configuration files, we can actually start deploying resources with our tool. In the usage section in the readme, we've defined the commands that you need to run to deploy your environment. Now before we actually run one of these commands from the usage section, I want to show you that there aren't any CloudFormation stacks in existence in EC2, and neither are there any running instances. That should change. So let's go back and let's run this init command, and we're going to use a deploy model single standalone, which means we're just going to deploy a single VE in an application host in a region. That region is US East 1, and I'm going to call the environment Demo 1. This init command is going to create the Ansible inventory, which defines a set of hosts we want to deploy. You can see that even after I've run that command, the deployment is still in a not deployed or error state, so let's actually go ahead and deploy it, and it's going to create those resources. The first thing that needs to be created is the VPC or virtual private cloud. All the other networking and compute infrastructure will be created inside of it. You can see where that stack is in a create in progress state here. All right, I paused the video while those provisioning steps completed, but now let's take a look at the results. The first thing you can see in the output from the script we ran is the login information for the application host and the big IP. 
We only deployed one of each, but we can go log into those in a second. Let's first take a look at what we've actually deployed here in Amazon. On this page here, you can see the CloudFormation stacks that we've deployed. Each has a set of outputs and resources that are worth inspecting. For instance, the Big IP stack includes resources such as network interfaces, elastic IP addresses, and security groups. In the EC2 panel, we can see that there are two running instances and a number of elastic IPs that have been deployed. Finally, I'm going to log into Big IP. I'll use the configuration utility rather than SSH, but you'd see the same thing there. These credentials I'm using are credentials I define in the configuration files I edited earlier. In local traffic virtual servers, you can see that we've configured a number of virtual servers for this big IP, which is again running in Amazon. We've attached a number of policies and profiles to these virtual servers that you can inspect later, but the important part here is we're configuring all of these elements with iControl REST. Finally, the demo iApp shows that you can consistently manage profiles and policies across your on-premise and virtual environments. That wraps up this demo. I hope we've provided you with some ideas on how you can orchestrate Big IP in AWS and other environments. And I hope you'll take the time to visit github.com slash f5networks to see some more code examples.